In yesterday's class, we discussed about the in situ conservation, the conservation of biodiversity. In that, the in situ conservation uh, we studied. So, in in situ conservation, I explained about uh, the national parks uh, as well as uh, the biosphere reserves, sanctuaries, all this. Okay. Now, today, uh, I'll continue the next portion of this uh, biodiversity conservation. <clears throat> so yesterday I explained about the in situ conservation. Uh, now today the ex situ conservation. Ex situ conservation. So what do you mean by this ex situ conservation? Ex situ conservation is the deeper. It is a conservation of various fauna and flora. Where the fauna and flora species outside the natural habitat, outside the, the natural habitats is called ex situ conservation. It's called Ex situ conservation. So here we are preserving, we are conserving the a certain fauna as well as flora, a certain species which are uh, which are which are going to be extinct in wild. The such type of species we have to identify. So such type of species are going to be protected or maybe conserved in a one of the um, uh, one of the area where it is uh, maintained by the human beings so, and that area or maybe that ecosystem like area we have to preserve, we have to uh, maintain uh, so in such conditions. So we have to uh, improve the uh, population of these particular species of plants as well as animals. So outside the natural habitat, in artificial habitat, we are, we are going to be a preserve, we are going to be conserve these animals as well as plant species. So such type of animals as well as plant species in nature, in uh, so these are going to be extinct. Such type of uh, the extinct species, extinct, those are going to be to become to be extinct. Such type of the extinct species we have to identify, and these species are going to be preserved in one of the uh, artificial habitat. So that is called as uh, the ex situ conservation. That means it is. Here we are not preserving, we are not conserving the animals in their natural habitat or maybe the plants in their natural habitat. So the, whatever the animals as well as plants, that is fauna as well as flora, are going to be extinct, are going to be extinct, to become an extinct. Such so type of individuals we have to identify, we have to select and these are a collecting from the wild nature and these are preserved and this uh, population size is going to be increased so by providing the facilities uh, by providing the artificial environment to these individuals or maybe benefits to these individuals in order to increase its population size that is called as uh, the ex situ conservation but this ex situ conservation it is a little bit somewhat it is costlier it is costlier so but this uh, ex situ conservation is playing vital role as a one of the back source for the uh, a future in situ uh, conservation projects. 
future in situ conservation projects. So, in our, so say for example, one of the species which is going to be extinct, which is going to be extinct, a susceptible species we are conserving in ex situ conservation, in ex situ area. So, where we are improving the population size, we are improving the gene pool of this individual and such type of individual gene pool we are reintroducing in one of the natural habitat. It is a act as one of the back source. It acts as one of the back source for the uh, institute conservation projects purpose. So, that is why it is a costlier. It is somewhat it is costlier compared to the institute conservation. In institute conservation, so such type of uh, the processes is not required, but in exit conservation, the many processes are there, many rules has to be followed, and we have to uh, preserve the particular type of the seeds, or maybe the fruits, or maybe the uh, tissue arrangement to the cells in an artificial manner, and for that it, it required more and more uh, expenses. At the same time, in order to preserve these seeds, uh, it requires more expensive uh, products or maybe the expensive the substances. So that's why it is costly uh, compared to that of the in situ conservation. So in the it's a in situ conservation, the best example for this actual in situ conservation is first one is uh, the botanical gardens. Botanical garden. So, on the board of 1500 different, 1500 the botanical gardens are there throughout the world. Throughout the world, around the world, we are going to observe on the board of 1500 botanical gardens. 1500 botanical gardens where we are preserving our own boat or conserving our own boat 80,000 different species of plants. The different 80,000 of us plant species we are preserved, we are conserved throughout the 1500 of botanical gardens present in worldwide. Around the world, so human beings are created around about the 1500 botanical gardens. In these 1500 botanical gardens, the 80,000 different species of plants are going to be preserved. These are conserved. So, from these, what, these plants, or maybe plant species, we are extracting the genome content which is used, most useful for the molecular biology, which is most useful for the genetic biology. Uh, which is most helpful in the recreation of these plant species in wild areas. So that's why, so here the botanical garden is playing a vital role here. It acts as one of the back source for the future in situ conservation of uh, projects, in situ conservation projects, in situ conservation projects. So that's why. So, some of the plants, so, so many plants which are worse to be extinct, such type of plants are going to be cultivated here, they are conserved here around the world in 1500 botanical gardens. Likewise, the second one is the zoo. So, here in zoo, so, with the animals which are going to be extinct, the type of animals are going to be conserved here. Say, for an example, in Indian Zoo, so we are going to observe, we are preserving the, some tigers, especially the tigers like the white tigers, Bengal tigers, as well as the Indian lions are preserved here. Indian lions are preserved. Not only in their natural habitat, even though these tigers as well as lions are preserved in zoo also. So nowadays zoo, whatever they are using, they, they are conserving these animals, so this will be helpful for the uh, behavior uh, which, will, which will provide a behavioral atmosphere to the human beings or maybe some other uh, peoples. Okay? Apart from that, so by using these zoos, we are going to be a recreate, it is playing a better role in the recreation of values. So now, nowadays the zoos are not only for preserving the, maybe conserving the only the certain species, 
apart from that so it may improve the our economic growth of the country economic growth of the state which has some aesthetic values which has which has some aesthetic value so that's why in zoo we are preserving the various uh, plant sources as sorry the animal sources animals which are well preserved in the zoo especially the single horned rhinos as well as white tigers as well as the indian lions apart from that the cheetah which is explored from the africa eastern africa so already i said the cheetah species is extinct from the indian subcontinental region already it is extinct from the indian subcontinental region we cannot observe any single cheetah individual leopards are there the subspecies of the cheetah leopards are there but the cheetah is not there the cheetah is already extinct from this indian subcontinental region but such type of cheetah species which are going to be extract or maybe which are exported from the eastern africa and these are gets a preserved or maybe conserved in the indian zoo so recently the recently last eight days back so the cheetah again it is re implemented restored re conserved in mysore zoo so last time also last of the 2000 16 also the one of the one of the cheetah species is uh, uh, ex ex extracted from the eastern africa area eastern africa jungles and it will be re restored or re implemented in the mysore zoo but this due to the uh, unfavorable conditions or maybe due to the unable to adapt to this indian subcontinental uh, atmosphere or maybe the mysore zoo atmosphere so that is uh, the those Uh, those two uh, cheetahs are died this way this way died but again the last eight days back again this cheetah individual is restored in the mysore zoo likewise many animals uh, which are going to be extinct or which are threatened ones which are endangered ones so such type of uh, the animals are well preserved in zoo likewise uh, not only the cheetah even the some of the uh, the snakes also even though the snakes also especially the python especially the python species otherwise uh, some other species of uh, the snakes uh, we are well preserved in the various parts of uh, our country especially in the zoo that the second one is seed bank so this is one of the ex situ conservation it's a type of conservation where we are preserving the germplasm of various plant species with this plant species which are which are endangered ones which are endangered ones so such type of plant species germplasm we are preserving we are conserving we are conserving the germplasm of the certain plant species uh, which are endangered ones uh, at uh, minus 20 degree celsius minus 20 degree celsius so this is used in future especially the endangered species seeds the seeds of endangered species or maybe the fruits of the endangered species we are preserving at a minus 20 degree celsius the germplasm content is going to be preserved in minus 20 degree celsius so this is one of the uh, best example for the ex situ conservation then the third one is uh,
tissue culture. So here, whatever the germplasm is there, this germplasm is used for the callus formation, used for callus formation. So where these are preserved, and this will be used for the tissue culturing technique. This will be used for the tissue culturing technique. So here, the, once the calabasa, we are using this tissue and the, the various cells, and these are used in the tissue culture technique, where we are helps with helping growth of the particular type of the or maybe the production of the particular type of the tissue or maybe particular type of the plant part. So that is the tissue culture technique. Rather than this, the fourth one is just cryopreservation. Cryopreservation. So here, the cells are it might be the tissues or the embryos or the embryos or embryonoids. So these are a preserved in liquid nitrogen is a preserved it liquid nitrogen at the minus 190 degrees Celsius at minus 190 degrees Celsius say for example the sperms of the exotic seeds of a particular cattle exotic breeds of a particular cattle or it might be the sperms of the one of the wild variety of a cattle bull is going to be extracted and that will be stored or preserved at a, in liquid nitrogen at minus 190 degrees Celsius at minus 190 degrees Celsius so which is used in future that is called as a cryopreservation in cryopreservation not only we have uh, 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 storing or maybe conserving the particular cells even the particular tissue or maybe the embryos, embryonoids so these are going to be preserved, these are going to be conserved at minus 190 degrees Celsius in the liquid nitrogen that is cryopreservation so these all these are the best example, these are the uh, types of the ex situ conservation where we are uh, conserving these uh, tissues as well as the cells as well as uh, the plant species or maybe the animal species for the future use purpose or they are used as a, one of the back source for the in situ conservation projects. So the conservation of biodiversity. So here the in 1992, 1992, the one of the summit that is Earth Summit is conducted in conducted in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. In Brazil, in Rio de Janeiro. So here, uh, so convention. One of the convention is this. Uh, uh, this convention is uh, uh, a convention on biological diversity is conducted in 1992. That is Earth Summit. That is uh, the Rio de Janeiro in Brazil. In 19. 92. So according to this convention, this convention basically had uh, the three main objectives. This convention is basically had three main objectives. One of the objective is the conservation of biodiversity. Objectives of Earth Summit. 
the first one is the conservation of biodiversity the second one is sustainable use of biodiversity the third one is the sharing of benefits in the utilization of genetic process the sharing of benefits the sharing of benefits in the utilization of genetic resources sharing of benefits in the utilization of genetic processes or resources in the genetic resources so these are the three main objectives which is uh, uh, <clears throat> these are the main objectives in of earth or earth summit that is rio de janeiro which is conducted at rio de janeiro in brazil so one of us one is the conservation of the biodiversity we have to conserve we have to conserve the biodiversity the sustainable use of biodiversity so we have to minimize we have to use the natural resources wide variety of the natural resources in a sustainable manner that is we have to use in a appropriate manner we have to use in a minimize minimize uh, sources of the nature we have to use for the production of the new products apart from that the sharing of the sharing of benefits in the utilization of the genetic resources so say for example in the indian subcontinent region especially in india is especially in the eastern himalayan region from one of the plant if you are extracted alkaloid which is the one which which has one of the most important role in order to cure the particular type of disease in order to cure the particular type of disease for example say uh, um, just i am giving a, giving an example so against the covid 19 so suppose in eastern himalaya region from one of the plant if you are extracting the alkaloid that alkaloid if it is used against the treatment of the covid 19 if it is success if it is success in the treatment against the covid 19 by using the alkaloid from the so and so plant from the so and so plant so such type of the genetic content of this alkaloid should be shared from one country to the another country or from another country to another country that is the one of the main objective of this 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 earth summit so this sharing of benefits in the utilization of the genetic resources in the utilization of the genetic resources uh, another example uh, is so if you are producing if you are developing one of the new cattle one of the new cattle by using the some uh, desirable quality sperm which is extracted from one of the wild variety or maybe the exotic breeds of cattle so such type of the cattle sperms are going to be shared between the two countries or maybe more than two countries so that is the, the one of the objective of this earth summit which is held in the rio de janeiro brazil in 1992 in 1992 likewise one more summit which was uh, held in johannesburg in 2002 
वर्ल्ड समिट एल एट जोहानसबर्ग साउथ अफ्रीका एट जोहानसबर्ग साउथ अफ्रीका सो वेर वन नाइंटी कंट्रीज आर पार्टिसिपेटेड वेर One ninety countries are participated, and the outcome of this World Summit is sustainable use of biodiversity. The outcome of the summit is the summit is use of sustainable use of. Biodiversity, sustainable use of biodiversity. That means we have to minimize the utilization of maybe the exploitation of the ecos, the various resources from the ecosystem, or maybe with the biodiversity. That is one of the main uh, outcome of this uh, World Summit, which is held at uh, Johannesburg, South Africa, during the uh, 2002, where 190. Uh, countries are participated and they will agree to uh, sustainable use of the biodiversity sustainable use of biodiversity and uh, the 26th uh, sorry 22nd may is considered as an international day of uh, the biodiversity every year every year 22nd may we are celebrating the international day of uh, biodiversity and uh, Every year, we are celebrating International Day of Biodiversity, and two thousand ten is considered as. international year of biodiversity international year of biodiversity which is the 2010 2010 year is considered as international year of biodiversity the 22nd may of every year and every year 22nd may is celebrated as one of the international day of biodiversity So this is about the conservation of biodiversity. The second one is so in biodiversity conservation. The first one is over. The how we should conserve the biodiversity is over. Now, the why should we conserve the biodiversity? The second one is why should we conserve? Why is why it is necessary? Why we need to conserve the biodiversity? So as you know that uh, due to the increase in uh, population explosion, especially in human beings, so we are uh, in turn depending upon the various uh, natural resources. So we are extracting the various. Uh, Raw materials from the earth crust. We are extracting the various raw materials from the wide variety of plant species as well as animal species. Wide variety of plant species as well as animal species. Suppose, suppose, suppose if you are over exporting the particular type of the species of plants, or it might be the animals. So those plants as well as animals are going to be extinct. So we are unable to get these uh, resources uh, from such type of the plant species or maybe the animal species which are already extinct ones. 
So that's why we need to conserve. We need to conserve this biodiversity. So this uh, con the conservation of the biodiversity is uh, mainly <coughs> helps in. It is well known for its multiple benefits. It mainly helps in the benefits. So here the biodiversity is known for its multiple benefits, such as economic medicines as well as recreational values, such as. Economic to maintain the economic economic growth of the country, to production of the various uh, medicines. Apart from that, for the recreational values, so these this bio, bio, biodiversity is playing a vital role here. It has the multiple benefits to the human beings or maybe to the various fauna as well as flora which are present in the uh, particular atmosphere, ecosystem, or maybe the particular habitat, or an entire earth, whatever the biodiversities are there, in order to maintain the stability of the biodiversity, so these, uh, we should uh, conserve this biodiversity. Now, some of the main reasons for this uh, conservation of biodiversity is due to, as I said, the, due to the increase in the population explosion, Especially the human beings are going to be extracted by anything else from the natural resources. So that too they are over exploiting the particular species of plants as well as animals. The system of plants as well as animals if they are going to be extinct. So again in further in future we cannot, uh, um, we cannot maintain the biodiversity to our the future generations after 50 years or maybe the 70 years after 50 years or maybe the 70 years so that means we are we have to we have to give something to the some something to our future generations we have to provide the better environmental condition better environmental condition to our future generations so already we too don't know how was this dodo uh, animal is? How was the dodo animal is? Uh, it, 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 it was. How was this dodo animal? So just we are uh, we are giving some uh, recreational ideas by observing the photos, by observing the images. We come to know that oh, suspect of uh, the animals was uh, li uh, lived long years uh, long uh, ago, long years ago. But we don't know how it was. In future, might be in our the future generations, our future generations, might be they don't know how the tigers were, or tigers were, or tigers were, how these are, how the lions are, what are the shape, whether whether these are carnivore or it might be the sanguivore or it might be anything else. We don't know. In future generations, they, 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 these, individuals, these individuals are don't know regarding about the elephants, or it might be the tigers, or it might be the lions, especially the white tigers. So that's why we have to conserve, we, we have to conserve, we have to contribute something to our future generation individuals. So that's why we should conserve the biodiversity. So the biodiversity conservation is mainly studied under three main headings. So one is the narrowly utilitarian, second one is broadly utilitarian. Third one is ethical values. Third one is ethical values. So let us see the one by one. Let us see the one by one. The narrowly utilitarian underlines essential services rendered by the biodiversity with respect to the economic benefits. With respect to the economic benefits, only the with respect to economic benefits. 
economic benefits includes so these economic benefits of the narrowly utilitarians are the first one is the food the second one is medicines the third one is industries the fourth one is bio prospecting the first one is food the second one is medicines the third one is industries the fourth one is bio prospecting so these are mainly benefits for only the economic benefits purpose narrowly limited ones are used only for economic benefits purpose the food the food is the main source of all the animals especially the human beings all the animals they require the food material the human beings are mainly depending upon these the food material not only this food material the or the food materials the food materials like not only we are extracting from the plant sources and also we are extracting from the animal sources the food like the cereals millets fruits the food like the millets fruits vegetables pulses pulses vegetables etc etc all these are obtaining from the either the animal source or it might be the plant sources either they are obtaining from the animal sources or it might be the plant sources uh, apart from these even the some of the other food materials which are used uh, used like used as a these are used from the these are extracted from the waste animals like the milk or it might be the eggs also even the meat also we are cultivating the certain animal species only for the meat purpose we are cultivating the certain plant animal species only for the production of the egg cells and we are cultivating the certain cattle only for the milk purpose so all these are also used as one of the main source of the food material in human beings sorry by the human beings by the human beings so we are depending upon the total the 10000 different species of plants are there but out of these 10000 different edible plants we are depending upon only the three types of plants so one is the wheat plant the second one is the corn plant and the third one is the rice plant the two third of the food is supplied by these three uh, plant species only the two third of the food demand is supplied by only these three different types of plant species that is wheat corn as well as rice rice plants we are depending mainly on these plant species around about the 5000 plant species already we are extracted we know the economic economic importance of these plant species as well as a main source for, for source of food of these plant species already these are extracted and these are analyzed and these are taxonomically they are let's say, uh, classified and we know the uses of these plants the edible part of this plant which and every plants and still around about the 75000 of the plant species are unknown we should still we should exploit we should extract and we should analyze the benefits of these plants still we cannot all uh, might be these are believed that that is the 75000 of different plants which are present in the uh, world environment and uh, in biodiversity so the all these are estimated as these are edible ones these are edible ones but still these the use of these plants is still we don't know we have to classify we have to taxonomically classify we have to analyze which is the edible part of these plant sources so likewise the one of the plant
which produces the it is coffee plant from comoros it is from madagascar comoros from madagascar which may produce as one of the caffeine free caffeine free seeds or maybe the substances which is free from the caffeine content which is free from the caffeine content which is uh, cultivated in madagascar that is in a camaros islands near the madagascar so where it produces the free from the uh, caffeine free seeds and these seeds are they are not stimulants these are not stimulants usually the caffeine content present in the coffee plant so it is stimulant in nature but what are the camaros islands where we are cultivating the certain plants coffee plants so whatever these coffee plant produces the seeds which are totally free from the caffeine content the subset of plants we are going to be cultivating the subset of plants are plant seeds are used by the human beings that means non stimulant coffee plant we are producing apart from that we are also exploring the and cultivating the one of the plant Perugrow. From the perugrow, we are cultivating one of the plant. Where we are going to be extracting the substances. These substances are the three hundred times, three hundred times sweeter than the sugar. These are three hundred times more sweetener, more sweeter than that of the sugar. So, which is cultivated in the Peregua, which is cultivated in Peregua, where it produces a substance which is more 300 times sweeter than that of the normal sugar. So, that is used as one of the main food source. Apart from that, the second one is medicines. Before extracting the penicillin as well as the quinine content from the penicillin and syncona tree, syncona plant species, before extracting the penicillin and quinine content from the penicillin as well as the synchona tree, a plant. So, if such type of plants, if they are gets extincted, if they are gets extincted, then we are unable to treat the various diseases like the malaria as well as some other diseases. Because the malaria as well as some other diseases, we are going to be treated with the help of the quinine content. With the help of quinine content, hydroxyl quinine content. Apart from that, with the various diseases. That means we, we, we are unable to cure the type of the diseases like the malaria or maybe some other diseases. Because if these plants are gets extincted, then we are unable to extract, we are unable to uh, get the penicillin content as well as quinine content from these plants. If we are unable to get this quinine uh, content and penicillin content, we cannot treat the certain diseases. Apart from that, we are also be using certain uh, the plants like the periwinkle plant. This periwinkle plant is used the alkaloid content which is extracted from this periwinkle.
We are extracting the alkaloid content. This alkaloid is mainly possessing white latex. So this white latex alkaloid is mainly rich in the wind crystal as well as wind blasting. Which is used as anti-cancer drugs. Which is used as anti-cancer drugs. So, as I said in the previous classes, the lizard pine is mainly extracted from the Rolpia omitoria, which has a different concentration of its chemical content, which is used to treat the blood pressure. Which is used to treat the cardiac related diseases, cardiac related diseases, heart related diseases. Likewise, we are using, we are extracting the one of the uh, alkaloid is called as a taxol from the one of the plant is called as a taxus bakata plant. Taxus bakata plant. From this plant, whatever we are extracting the taxol, it is also used as a anti-cancer drugs. They are also used as anti-cancer drugs. So that's why, so the whatever the wide variety of plant sources we are going to be observed in the nature, these, from these wide variety of plant sources we are extracting the various uh, substances, alkaloids which are useful in the, the manufacturing of the various medicines. In order to treat the stomach patient, in order to treat the malaria patient, but, uh, anemic patients or it might be the uh, AIDS patient or it might be the cancer pa patients especially the whatever the wind crystal wind dust that is from the perennial plant we are extracting the alkaloid content which is used to treat uh, against the lymphoma type of uh, the cancer against the lymphoma type of cancer so which is act as one of the anti-cancer drug Likewise, many uh, plant species are there, many uh, <coughs> uh, herbs plants are there, trees are there. From these plants, we are extracting the chemicals. So these are used in the treatment of various uh, the, uh, diseases. And these are used in the manufacturing of the medicines, the syrups, the cough syrup. Like, uh, say, for example, analgesics, we are extracting from the opium poppy plant. Hallucinogens, we are extracting from the cannabis sativa. The coca plants, uh, they are, uh, from these coca plants, we are extracting the stimulants. We are extracting the uh, certain plant sources where they are used as a tranquilizer, so the depression, so maybe uh, depressive drugs. Even though the many other drugs, so like the codeine, is used as a one of the uh, <coughs> suppressing uh, drug, especially in a, a cough treatment, which suppresses the activity of cough. So, such type of the plants, parts we are using, the chemical content we are using, the alkaloid content we are using in a medicinal fields in order to cure, in order to treat the various diseases. So, that is about the medicines. The next one is industries. So as you know that industries are mainly depending upon the wild source of plant species or maybe the animal species. From the wild source of plant species we are extracting the tannins, we are extracting the gums, we are extracting the dyes, we are extracting the phenols, we are extra extracting the various xanthines. So they are used in the manufacturing of the various products as well as byproducts. Apart from that, the industries are mainly depending upon the food which is which is explored from the uh, tropical forest areas. So these woods are mainly used in the construction purpose, in the, used as a constructing materials, used as a constructing materials. So that is about the industries. Then bio prospecting. The bio prospecting is the term is used for the exploring the molecular. It's the term 
is used for the exploring the molecular genetic as well as species level of uh, the diversity for the products of uh, economic importance it is used exploring the molecular genetics as well as uh, the species diversity for products of uh, economic uh, importance that is called uh, bio prospecting that is called bio prospecting so it is the process where the discovery and the commercialization of the new products uh, and that come from our the earth's rich biological resources it mainly helps to process the a uh, process of the discovery and commercialization of the certain products which are extracted from the natural resources so that is called bio prospecting say for example the rosy periwinkle from the madagascar has been found to a uh, contain a chemical that have been uh, used in the treatment of the lymphoma during the, the chemotherapy during chemotherapy that means here it is bio prospecting is used for the molecular basis level it is used at the genetic level it is used at the species diversity level so where it is more more useful in order to produce in order to maintain the a gene pool or maybe the genome content of the future generation by using the existing the gene content or gene pool so that is bio prospecting so this is about the nano leaf utilitarians then the second one is the broader leaf utilitarians so in broader leaf utilitarians the first one is oxygen second one is pollination the third one is aesthetic value so broader utilitarian utilitarians it deals with the unlimited ecological services it deals with the unlimited ecological services unlimited ecological services rendered by the biodiversity to human welfare rendered by biodiversity to human welfare purpose this uh, to serve the human beings uh, benefits are maybe well for welfare purpose so we are uh, Uh, using the certain uh, the sources uh, from the biodiversity this is that to unlimited ecological services so unlimited ecological services like uh, oxygen oxygen is uh, required unlimited is not limited for the every human beings or it might be the every the animals it might be varies the utilization of the oxygen by the by a single individual of a particular species it might be varies from time to time or it might be the it may be depending upon the situation uh, activity of an individual it may be depending upon the uh, behavior of an individual so uh, utilization of the oxygen is somewhat different so as you know that uh, the in atmosphere around about the 24 percent of oxygen is there so out of this the uh, 20% is of oxygen nowadays it is uh, going to get by the individuals uh, for the respiration process so this oxygen is playing vital role in the catabolic reactions within the body oxygen is the main source for the respiration of the survival of the individuals the survival of the individuals so so here the from the amazon rainforest area 
continues to exist in its own natural habitats untouched by human development producing around the 20 percent of the total oxygen in the earth's atmosphere in the earth's atmosphere so that's why we can calculate the cost of oxygen or cylinder and the quantity of oxygen a person requires per day you can calculate that is about the oxygen then the pollination so here the pollination in the plants is mainly brought by the pollinators brought by the pollinators without the pollinators the plant pollination is not possible without the pollinators the pollination is not possible so for the pollination purpose the pollinators are required these pollinators like the animals or it might be the water source or it might be the wind so usually the pollinators are nothing but these are the animals where these are mainly transmits the pollens to onto the stigma where that helps in formation of the fruits as well as seeds the fruit formation as well as seeds formation is mainly because of the pollination the pollination is brought by the pollinators so that's why so a large percentage of crop plants uh, rely on the pollination by the wild animals uh, wild bees or maybe honey bees or maybe hover flies or maybe butterflies moths bats or it might be the birds so that's why so because of that the fruit formation we are going to observe the seed formation is going to be observed because of that the high yielding capacity of the crop plants we are going to observe in agricultural fields in agricultural fields whatever we are cultivating in the crop plants these crop plants crop plants in order to yield a high content of yieldness they require pollinators so that's why we are going to get the various seeds various grains various fruits from the atmosphere from the nature from the agricultural fields this is mainly because of pollination this is because of pollination next the third one is aesthetic values the aesthetic values the modern man does not live by bread only on by bread only so we we in turn depending upon the various uh, sources of food material it requires the recreation of biodiversity the biodiversity has a great a great aesthetic values it has great aesthetic value a growing number of people are participating in the various activities like hiking camping bird watching bee keeping pet keeping gardening so all these are aesthetic values all these are aesthetic values so likewise the last one is ethical values so it, it is uh, it uh, literally means moral or maybe the ethical aspects to put forth uh, certain moral principles or maybe the rules to conserve the particular diversity biodiversity that means the moral values should be there or some rules we have to create the moral principles we have to create or maybe will be there in order to protect the biodiversity in order to conserve the biodiversity these moral beliefs so are propagated through the cultural these moral beliefs are propagated through the cultural or maybe through the religious aspects or it may be or by the spiritual benefits spiritual sorry the beliefs the spiritual beliefs so where for example we are uh, the biodiversity is one of the intrinsic value every biodiversity it has its own intrinsic value 
So in intrinsic values of this biodiversity, if you are observing the ethical values or maybe the moral values are also play a vital role here. The religious, religious beliefs is also play a vital role here. Moral beliefs is also play a vital role here to protect or maybe to conserve the particular type of the biodiversity, so that we can uh, contribute something to our future generations. So that we can contribute something to the our future generations by propagating these moral values. So we are going to be protect the particular species of the plants or maybe the animal species, which is useful to our the future generations. So that the future generations so they can utilize, they should get the multiple benefits from these uh, plants or maybe the animal sources. That is the ethical beliefs. That is ethical beliefs. So that is about this uh, biodiversity and the conservation topic. That is the completion of this topic. Uh, at the same time, with this class, uh, we are we are completed uh, the zoology syllabus. Uh, it was the second year zoology syllabus successfully. So, so remaining or remaining uh, schedule will be uh, will be shortly. We will uh, announce regarding that. According to that, we will uh, continue the process. So now this is the end of zoology syllabus, second year PU2, second year zoology syllabus. So this is the last topic. So environmental issues is not included. So already 30 percentage cutoff syllabus is uh, uh, released by the UPSC. So according to that, uh, we are completed all the topics, right, from the human human uh, the human reproduction. The reproductive health, then genetics, then genetics upwards. So the evolution is not included. Now uh, human health and diseases over. Then the biodiversity and conservation topic. This is also now today we completed. So that is end of your second year. You see syllabus. Thank you.